Hello, my name is Kat, and today I want to share with you guys some of my kind of ambitious reading plans. So it's been quite a while since I made a monthly TBR video like this. I used to do this at the beginning of every single month, but then I started to feel kind of restricted by them. Even though it was me choosing the books ahead of time, I just... It wasn't working for me at that time. So I stopped doing monthly TBRs because I was like, no one can tell me what to do. N not even me, especially not me. I have no self-discipline. Like it's actually really hindering my life. I need help. But lately I've just been in a very good reading mood and I'm feeling very ambitious and I felt like setting myself a monthly TBR. So. Here we are. Don't rhyme. Now March is looking to be an amazing month for book releases. Like there are so many new books coming out that I'm excited for, but that's not what I'm planning to read this month. I am very excited for a lot of them and I do want to get to them soon. But more than that, I want to catch up on some of the 2017 titles that I haven't read yet. So I have eight books here that I have been meaning to read and that I am determined to just finally get to this month so I can stop feeling guilty every time I look at them and I can move on with my reading life. So first up, I have a couple of YA contemporaries that I'm really excited to get to, especially because I've been loving contemporaries lately. Like my two favorite books of the year so far have been contemporaries, which surprised me, but I'm okay with it. I'm going to embrace it. Like I want to take advantage of this reading mood and just devour all the contempts. So I have here, They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera. I have been wanting to read this book forever, it feels like. And I'm finally getting to it this month. Like for sure, for sure. It's the Booksplosion book of the month for March. So yeah, definitely reading this one. It takes place in a world where you receive a phone call on the day that you're going to die, warning you that you know, sometime in the next 24 hours, you're done. We follow two boys who each received their phone calls that this is their last day, and they end up meeting and spending their last day together. I have both loved and also been kind of emotionally traumatized by Adam's previous books, and I'm expecting pretty much the same from this one. So. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to this destroying me. Next up, I have here The Upside of Unrequited by Becky Alwertali. Now, I don't know a ton about this book. I know we're following a 17-year-old girl who has had 26 unrequited crushes over her life, and now she's dealing with, I believe, crush number 27, and she's also struggling with the changes in the relationship with her twin sister as her twin sister gets into her first serious relationship and they start to drift apart a little bit. I adored Becky's first novel, Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda, so I'm very excited to read more by her, especially because it sounds just as cute and hilarious and fun as Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda. So yeah, looking forward to this. Then I have here Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca Zapia. This is another YA contemporary. It's about a teenage girl who in real life is very quiet and shy and kind of a loner, but online she is the creator of this very popular webcomic. Then this boy transfers to her school and she learns that he is like one of the most prolific fan fiction writers of her webcomic. So they end up becoming friends and while Eliza knows who he is online, he doesn't know that she's the creator of the webcomic. He thinks she's just another fan. So yeah, it sounds really great. I love the premise and I've heard nothing but good things about this. Gotta get to it. The remaining five books that I have here are part of a very specific theme. If any of you guys are familiar with the Prince Award, the 2018 winner and honors books, the sort of runners up, were just recently announced. And I already owned most of them and wanted to read most of them. So I, I decided I was just gonna go for it and read all five of the 2018 Prince books. So first I have here, We Are Okay by Nina LaCour. And this was like, 
the winner of the Prince Award. And then the other ones were like runners up, they're honors books. I haven't really read the synopsis because it is such a short book. I kind of just want to go into it and experience it. I do know that the main character is 18 and she's in her first year of college. And I was just ranting about how desperate I am for more books with college age protagonists. So yeah, definitely looking forward to this, especially because it won the Prince Award. Now I don't want to play favorites. But the next book I have here is definitely my favorite. And that is Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. Shiny! Oh my god, it's so shiny! It is not new information that Lainey Taylor is one of my favorite authors of all time and that I have been intending to read this book for what feels like forever. I've just been nervous and hesitating because my expectations are so very high, but now I am in just a great reading mood and this book just won a Prince Honor. The sequel just got a cover and a release date of October 2018, so this is happening. This is finally happening. The next Prince Honor book that I need to read is The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. I actually started reading this book last year because I got invited to attend the movie set and I wanted to read the book first. But I ended up not going because that was when all the Northern California wildfires were happening and my apartment was smack dab in the middle of the hey, you might be evacuated at any moment zone. So I just, I was too stressed to travel. I ended up setting the book down and haven't picked it up since, but I still really want to read it. And especially before the movie comes out. So I'm like 120 pages in and I was really liking it. So yeah, I'm looking forward to finally finishing this book. Then I have here Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds. This is about a black teenager named Will whose older brother was fatally shot and now Will is struggling with his grief, but he also has a plan for revenge. I've heard that this is a very powerful book and that it is beautifully written. It's told in verse, which I really enjoy that format, but I haven't read a ton of it, so I am very much looking forward to this one. And finally, the last book that I have here is one that I actually didn't own and I didn't initially plan on getting. Like when I first saw the list of the Prince books, I was like, ooh, I should do a Prince-themed TBR with all of these except that one because it's not my usual read and I don't own it and I'm not super interested in it. But then I was like, no, Kat, you're being ridiculous. Like that's exactly why you should pick up that book and give it a try. So I went ahead and bought Vincent and Theo by Deborah Heligman. I hope I'm saying that correctly. This is a non-fiction biographical kind of book about Vincent and Theo Van Gogh. And I personally don't have a ton of interest in nonfiction unless it's about writing craft or like motivational get your life together kind of nonfiction because I, I, I need to get my life together and those books help. And even if I were to read a biography, if I, if I were to have interest in a historical figure, Vincent Van Gogh is definitely not one that would ever come to mind for me personally. Like my most significant exposure to anything Vincent Van Gogh related is a Doctor Who episode. So I don't think I even knew that Vincent had a brother named Theo. Like I'm already learning. <laughs> so yeah, this is probably not a book I would have ever just like naturally picked up on my own, but I, I like pushing myself to try new things and you know I, I decided that I wanted to read all the 2018 Prince winner and honors books and this is one of them so I'm gonna give it a try and I actually really warmed up to the idea of this book like I, I am genuinely interested in it now that I've read a little bit about it and kind of rejected my initial rejection of it because it, it was unfamiliar to me. Like, I am now very much looking forward to reading this. So yes, these are the eight books that I am hoping 
slash determined to read in March. I would love to hear from you guys if you've read any of these or if you're interested in reading any of these. How many of the Prince books did you read? Let me know in the comments below. But yeah, that is it. Those are my kind of ambitious reading plans for the month of March and that is gonna do it for this video today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have a wonderful night and a wonderful reading month in March, and I will have another video up soon, so I will see you then. Goodbye! Oh, I almost knocked you way the fuck over. I apologize.